Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Raccoon Tycoon. Raccoon Tycoon is brought to you by Forbidden Games. It's for two to five players, ages eight and up, and game time ranges from 60 to 90 minutes. Your goal is to be the top dog of Astoria. You'll do this by producing valuable commodities in an ever-changing marketplace, then using those funds to bid at auction for the most valuable railroads, and using that money to acquire buildings that can give you bonuses or power-ups. Also, you can use your production to buy towns along the way, which also give you valuable points. Ultimately, you're looking to acquire the ultimate set of buildings, railroads, and towns to become the ultimate top dog. This is what a typical setup looks like. At the top of the board, you'll find the marketplace. You'll then below that, you'll find where the railroad cards are. This is where you'll auction and bid for these railroads. And next to that was where you'll purchase and build towns. Below that, you'll have buildings that you can acquire throughout the game. So on your turn, you have five possible actions you can perform, and you can only do one of these per turn. First, let's take a look at production, because production is really the heart of the game. You're going to look at your production cards. Actually, these are price and production cards, because at the top of the card will show how the market will be influenced. For every commodity at the top, those commodities will move up $1 on the tracks. Now, the bottom of the card shows the commodities that you will acquire. Now, no matter how many um, commodities are here, you only get three of them, so you have to choose wisely. Another possible action is selling commodities. Now you've gathered a pile of these in front of you. You're watching the market tracks to see which ones might be the good ones to sell at a certain time throughout the game. And you're watching your fellow players to see what they might be looking to sell. So it's a battle back and forth a bit to see who can sell first at the highest rate because once you do sell a commodity, that commodity drops in value, a dollar per commodity you sell. And it can really bottom out and really mess with the other players who might be acquire, trying to acquire the same commodity throughout the game. Another possible action is railroad auctions. And this can be really heated and tense because as you take a look at these railroad cards, you'll see that there's a series of victory points at the bottom. And as you collect a set of them, your victory points go up exponentially. So starting out with like Skunk Works, just having one railroad of Skunk Works is worth two points. And then if you acquire two, it's worth five, nine, and then finally worth 15 if you have four of this. So at that point, those auctions get super heated. And it's pretty intense, really fun actually. Um, you'll also notice there's a number, a dollar value in the bottom right corner, and that's what the auction needs to start at. I should say though that that is the minimum bid you should start with. You don't have to start at two. Let's say, let's start the bidding at $80 and see who is actually serious about needing that fourth card in a series of railroads. All right, another possible action is buying buildings and these buildings can really augment what you're doing on your turn there's a couple different types there are basic buildings and there are more advanced buildings so the basic ones basically allow you to acquire more goods on your turn when you do grab commodities and they typically have two sides so an iron deposit um, would cost you five bucks and if you flip it over at some point on your turn it's going to cost you an additional 12 but it gives you double the iron and becomes an iron mine. And then there are special buildings, right? Or these more advanced buildings that cost quite a bit more, typically 15, $30, somewhere in there. Um, but the one, one of my favorites I gotta mention is the auction house, because then every time an auction is performed, you get five bucks, which doesn't seem like a lot out of the gate, but as the game goes on and those auctions become more and more heated and more and more um, active, you're gonna get, you're gonna acquire a lot of money throughout the game. So all these buildings are gonna do very different things. There's you know things like getting more victory points and just augmenting what you can do on your turn. And then your final possible action is purchasing a town. And let's take a look at uh, Bridgewater here. So towns are gonna to vary as you go through the deck and they are purchased. And you can attach them to railroads for more points. But initially, like for Bridgewater, if you acquire Bridgewater, it's worth two victory points at the end of the game. You attach it to a railroad, it's then worth four victory points at the end of the game. Now, uh, the way you purchase these is not with money, like the other, um, like on doing auctions or, do, or purchasing buildings. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna use goods. So in this case, it costs you two wheat 
to get this town. And if you don't have any wheat, it'll cost you four goods of any type to get this town. And as you go through the town deck, the points, the victory points become bigger and bigger. So getting through there to those bottom towns is definitely advantageous. But you have to be careful also because everyone else obviously is trying to get those towns as well. And really, attaching them to railroads is key because it really does net you more points at the end of the game. So the game end is triggered when the last town is purchased or the last railroad is auctioned off. And then you finish out that round, total up your victory points, and whoever has the most is the top dog. Hey folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now that said, you know, this was a really fun, accessible, economic game. There's a lot going on. There's some really neat decision making and the buildings, the way they can augment your abilities and things you can do in your turn are fantastic. And also those auctions for the railroads can really be heated and a lot of fun. So. If this looks like a game that might be of interest to you, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. I think that's it for me, and until next time, folks, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.